Hey everybody, hope everybody's been doing okay. Sorry it's been a minute since I've been able to post a video. Times have been busy, it's starting to get nice out again, so we've been out throwing uh, some discs, playing some disc golf lately. But happy Father's Day. Uh, Father's Day to my father and all the other fathers out there. I know most of my friends are fathers by now, but some of you aren't like myself. But hey, I guess we're maybe the lucky ones. I'm not sure. We'll find out. Uh, eventually we'll get there, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, welcome back. Uh, today, obviously, I'm going to finally get around to doing my Black Cat video. So I'm going to show you all the goodies for the Black Cat, which I thought would be appropriate today, you know, being that uh, it's Father's Day. So it's supposed to have the sexy comic book characters. And essentially, <coughs> for those of you that are not familiar with the Black Cat, um, she's basically a Spider-Man villainous kind of anti-hero where she's not really a villain. Like, she's not out to, like, really kill anybody, but... She's essentially like, you know, the Catwoman to Batman, where it's like, she can be good, she can be bad, but she's not really bad, but she'll steal some stuff. But her power is really cool because her power is that she, um, anybody that's opposing her is granted bad luck. You know, the whole black cat cross her path is bad luck, but that's where her power is, is that she has bad luck. And at some certain point, I think she was given this power by like Kingpin or somebody like that had given her this power. I need to really read back up on that to uh, remember. Maybe she already had the power and maybe it was heightened at some point to give her more of the power. So yeah, so anybody that was trying to battle her would like have like weird accidents where they would like slip and fall as they're about to capture her and stuff like that. And yeah, so I always thought that that was pretty uh, cool kind of power to have, you know, as you're like trying to get away and the thing that you want to happen to somebody who's trying to chase you, it happens. Um, but yeah, to start, it's going to be kind of a long, longer video because there's kind of a lot of comic stuff to get to. But first, I'll try to bang out all the different kind of funny toy stuff that I have, or plus a couple little statue things. Uh, the first ever toy that they ever made of the Black Hat came out of the Spider-Man animated series. So this thing is 1996. And yeah, they had a really cool line of um, toys to come out of that series. It kind of piggybacked it onto the old original Marvel uh, comic book figure line. So that was fun. And, you know, after that, there was kind of a gap. Like, there, it didn't have any figures come out until, uh, I think, this one. This is the one that came out. Let me see if I can kind of pick out the year on this thing. Must have been 2004. I think, yeah, 2004, and this came out, and this is when Marvel Legends was kind of in its infancy, and this came in a, like, a Sinister Six pack, or there was a special pack of, like, five or six figures from Spider-Man, and this figure came in, and it's actually a god-awful figure, like, it's horrible, like, the mold's bad, the joints look ridiculous, and it's a really stupid figure, but it's hard to find, you cannot find it, and the pack that it came in is worth, like, a bunch of money. So this is a very uncommon figure to even have. But of course, you know, being the kind of collector that I am, I had to find one and pick it up and be on that later. I think the Marvel Legends... Oh, wait, no, they did a 12-inch a uh, because they did these dolls. And they did a bunch of Marvel Universe dolls, but this thing came out. Uh, but the mask just wasn't quite right. So what I did is I took the mask and I took it upon myself to cut it a little bit to look more like how her mask is supposed to look. And I used to have this in a shadow box with a bunch of other, like, you know, Black Cat stuff. I have my first appearance of the Black Cat and other junk in there with it and some of the figures. And, um, but yeah, even Funko got it on. There's a little, you know, Funko bobblehead Black Cat. And there's this Marvel Universe series of little toys that came out. It's kind of like the three and three fourth Star Wars size of toys Marvel put out. Uh, so yeah, that came out, and then Marvel Select, Marvel Select is actually, you know, I showed you that in that Carnage video, the Marvel Select Carnage, Marvel Select has like the most detailed, like, action figures, and they don't, they're more like display pieces than they are action figures, so this was the, from that, I don't have the accessories with her right now, it's in another box, but of course they made her super sexy with the boobs and all that, and then this was the, uh, part of the package that, that came with for that. Um, and then, yeah, with the first uh, Marvel Legends single pack Black Cat to come out, it was actually really good, like, far improvement from that first super cheesy Marvel Legends Black Cat. But yeah, so yeah, back again with the boobs, and yeah, they made her face look really good. It's actually a beautiful figure. 
Uh, yeah, they did a really good job. I was not disappointed with that one. But since then, she has, uh, I guess, gone further. I mean, there's a newer costume. So this is kind of like the modern age black hat. So now she has like, instead of all the boobs, she has like these cat eyes on her on her chest and you know, more classy looking. But yeah, that was a cool figure. And they gave her like the staff, the jewel, and then she's got this whip that for some reason they didn't design for her hand to hold on to. So that didn't quite work out. And of course they have Mini Mates. So this is the Mini Mate Black Hat. It came out with the Maximum Carnage because Black Hat was like, you know, I guess Peter Parker's kind of girlfriend during that. Or no, I think he was already with Mary Jane, but she was a big part of Maximum Carnage. And so yeah, so this Mark Maximum Carnage set came out and one of the sets had the Black Hat in it. That's Mini Mates. Mini Mates, it's just kind of like a, they're like bigger Legos with a little bit more joints. And over time I've had a couple different, um, statues of the black hat this one being probably the best one so you know they turn it around she's holding a jewel behind her back you know because she's a thief just like Catwoman, and you know and then they did a really good job on her face and the whole sculpt is pretty beautiful and i guess there's a variant edition of this where like see my jewel is a just a clear like diamond looking thing but i guess there's a variant where it's like a red like emerald not emerald uh, ruby they made a ruby edition and that one's a little harder to find and then I got this little mini bust. This one's, you know, just a cute little cheapy little thing. But yeah, it's always fun. And I guess there's a bunch of other like really cool uh, black hat statues. I mean, I've ha had like one of the J. Scott Campbell ones, you know, if you're not familiar with J. Scott Campbell, he's like the artist that did the cover of this thing here. Um, but I ended up selling that. And that was kind of after I'd met J. Scott Campbell and kind of left a bad taste in my mouth because he was kind of a dick. Uh, sorry, J. Scott Campbell, if you ever see this, you probably won't. But yeah, he was kind of a dick, so I kind of got out of being a big fan of J. Scott Campbell. So I kind of sold off a bunch of the comic books that I had that he had drawn and so on and so forth. But yes, let's go back into... Oh yeah, what I wanted to talk about too was uh, um, the Black Hat was never really represented in the Spider-Man movies. Like the modern day Spider-Man movies that we know and love. Um, first they did the Tobey Maguire uh, movies and then the Andrew Garfield movies. And then after that, now it's, um, for, what's his name again? Tom Holland. Um, but I forget if she, if her, her real name, the Black Hat's real name is Felicia Hardy. And I'm not quite sure if they had her as like a, you know, she works at the newspaper that Peter works for, Daily Bugle. Uh, but I'm not sure if she was in the original Tobey Maguire movies, but I do know that she was in the last Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2, which I was really hoping that they were going to make a third one of because they had just introduced her. It was Felicia Hardy, and she was in the second Andrew Garfield Amazing Spider-Man movie. So I was thinking, you know, it was going to set up for like a third one, and then they were going to have the Black Cat like actually in a movie, which would have been amazing. Um, but... They didn't continue with the Andrew Garfield ones, and now we're on to Tom Holland, and so now we got to kind of start off from scratch. But funny thing is, too, is the girl that played Felicia Hardy, the black who becomes the Black Cat in the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man Two movie, is none other than Felicity Jones, and a lot of you know Felicity Jones because she plays Jen Erso in Rogue One. Which is amazing, and so fun. Another funny, uh, weird connection, which is kind of I was destined to be a big Black Cat fan. Plus, you know, I love Felicity Jones. Um, was that you know, all growing up, I was under the impression, you know, my mom. She always told us she changes the story now. Like you go back, and she's like, "Oh no, that's not the name." But you know, forever for my first twenty years of life, I always heard my mom say that if I was a girl, my name was going to be Felicity uh, Noel. So Felicity is the first name, Noel is my second name, but my last name is Jones. So I would have been named Felicity Jones. And who ends up playing the black hat? Uh, Felicity Jones. So that's just, it's just, you know, I thought co co super coincidental. But yeah, still, my mother would argue that Felicity Noel Jones was going to be my name. I think, what would she say now? It, uh, I forget what she claims that it was going to be, but that's the name that I always remember growing up. Okay, so on to the comic books. Uh, this is the very first appearance of the Black Cat, and I showed you this comic book in my Stan Lee video when I talk about meeting Stan Lee. And uh, this was the second time I actually like met met Stan Lee in person, got to like talk to him for a second. 
I had him sign. And this is Spider Man number 194 from 1979. And that's the very first appearance of the Black Hat. And of course, she was a lot more conservative back then. And in later issues, you'll see that there's kind of similarities. I'll kind of point it out when we get there that they like kind of did like a, a redo of the cover for like later issues. Um, but yeah, so that's the very first appearance of the Black Hat. And second appearance, of course, is the following issue, 195. And you can just see her a little bit there, but yeah, so I picked up his, basically any time I see the black hat on a cover, I will pick it up. And I'm not sure if there was a big gap, like maybe she disappeared for a year, but I didn't see another issue where she's on the cover up until number 204. And of course we're still back, this is about 80, 81, and the black hat returns, back to give Spider-Man some bad luck or hell or what have you, and... And then again, there's another big gap, and here we go back, we're up to 1981, <laughs> and this is number 226, and the Black Cat comes back. And Spider-Man's, of course, in for a world of hurt, because he cannot stop her so easily, because, you know, she's got that whole bad luck power, so he's got to watch out for that. And then that's the continuation issue of that, 226 to 227. And I think at the same time, maybe you didn't see her again for a while. Um, yeah, this was maybe around this that same time, but then they switched over to her appearances being into a side series that they started being Peter Parker the Spectacular Spider-Man. So Peter Parker the Spectacular Spider-Man is where you see the black hat pop up again. That's issue number 75. And here's number 76. Where maybe, oh, she might be dying. I don't know, they're kind of like alluding to it and hopefully not or whatever else. But, you know, of course, later you learn, oh, of course she didn't die because, oh, here she is again. And, oh, wait, look, Spider-Man finally reveals to her who he really is. And I think maybe they were already dating at this time. Or maybe that's when she decided to date him. So maybe that was his ploy. And that's how he got her to date him. But, yeah. So 87 shows her face. And then she's back again in issue number 90. And then issue number 95, and I guess she was just a basically reoccurring character in this uh, spectacular Spider-Man series. Because, yeah, and then here's the Kingpin trying to divide them. You know, he's trying to turn everybody against each other, that darn Kingpin. And then, then she made some, you know, funny little side appearances. So this is actually uh, Marvel Comics Presents Wolverine, number 57. And these comics were cool because they did, like, a bunch of little blip stories and in each issue so it was like you got three or four different stories from different characters in each issue and I think this may be the only time that she ever appeared in this but um, yeah Black Cat takes on the Kingpin and you only see her on the back of the cover so there's no idea even on the front but yeah um, and then we go to oh yeah then they do a weird cameo with her uh, with uh, some of my other favorite superheroes uh, Cloak and Dagger and they get her kind of dressing you know kind of funny 80s retro which is pretty cool uh, and then moving on to that, we go back into, oh, The Amazing Spider-Man. So this is getting in a little further on. Or this is the Eric, Eric Larson time of Amazing Spider-Man. Eric Larson is one of my favorite Spider-Man artists. With him, Mike Bagley, Mark Bagley, and Todd McFarlane. Early Todd McFarlane, because that's when it was just like, you know, kind of crazy detail, but not too crazy. But yeah. And then, of course, so you only see her in the very top window of these thing with the other characters that tells you she's in this issue and same thing with this one you don't see on the cover except for the little box on the bottom you see her face and the little where they usually have a barcode so you know that she's in that issue and then we're getting a little further on to the uh, issue number 342 she makes a good solid cover appearance and then I think this is where yep still Eric Larson 343 they're on the cover again. She was always kind of helping out Spider-Man doing this or that. And then I think this is where we finally move on to Mark Bagley. Yeah, this is the Mark Bagley year. So we get into issue number 370. And of course, there she is. And Mark Bagley kind of did a turn on her where it was like, you know, she was always kind of sexy before. Eric Larson turned her sexy. But then Mark Bagley kind of took it to a whole nother level. And just gave her like that super like... Sexy, like, 90s look, you know, big hair. Of course, accentuated boobs. 
Uh, we'll do a little backtracking here because this was actually a funny, like one of my favorite uh, Marvel comic series was the What If series. So it's just like, okay, we're going to take a step aside from the main storylines and see like, what if this happened in the storyline and kind of change the dynamic of things. So like this one is, um, what if Amazing Spider-Man had not married Mary Jane? And of course, there's, you see the black cat in the corner, super, you know, shitty and grin because she's super happy that he's not going to marry her because, oh, wait, what? In the next issue, what if Amazing Spider-Man had married the black cat? And that was always her dream. I mean, she was always super in love with Peter Parker, but that pesky Mary Jane was always in the way. And then finally, I think later on, what are we getting into? Uh, 94. They finally give her her own series, or at least maybe a one-shot, I forget. Whether or not this was a couple issues, uh, I forget. Maybe I don't have those. Yeah, I don't think I have those if they exist, which means I should probably find them, but yeah. Um, yeah, we finally gave her her own comic book, which is super cool. Uh, Wild Man is the guy that did this cover. Out of that classic 90s comic art that all those guys were kind of stretching for. <laughs> and then she goes back. And now we're kind of getting out of where it's not exactly in order as far as the years go, but I'm just going to kind of go through these real quick just to kind of show you all the different appearances that Black Hat's made in different stuff. So there's Web Spider-Man, and then she got another series at one point. Uh, I'm not quite sure when in the timeline this goes. I don't think I have all of them. This is issue one and issue three. I thought I may have had the rest of that, but I'm going to have to find that later. And then she had a cool series with uh, that Joseph Michael Lindsner did with Wolverine called Claws. And he kind of had a different take on her and Wolverine. You know, he kind of made them look a little different than they usually do. So that was kind of fun. Issue number two. And issue number three of three. And then after that, oh yeah, Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith, the uh, actor-director, did a run... With them, he does some writing for Marvel here and there. So he did a Black Cat series called uh, Spider-Man and the Black Cat: The Evil That Men Do. So here's issue number one, issue number two, issue number three, and number four, and number five. And here she is with my Carl. And apparently, I don't have number six. I'm gonna have to look at. Now for that, I guess after this, I'll be making a checklist of, oh, what issues I don't have, because apparently there's some things that I don't have. And then we go into, oh, the Ultimate Spider-Man. So Ultimate Universe is separate from the regular Marvel Universe. It's like a completely different take. They kind of like, they took the same characters, gave them new origins, new ages, new different stuff, and just kind of like went from there. So slightly altered costumes. So this was like the slightly altered Ultimate Black Hat suit. So she kind of has goggles on. As opposed to just like the regular mask, which is funny because the next issue they gave her uh, what well, looks like the regular mask, but it's supposed to be the goggles. I don't know, maybe they just didn't color the uh, goggle lenses in right, because then you go back to number 152 and she's got the goggles on again. Which is funny because it took them 100 issues to get back, and that's actually a J. Scott Campbell cover. I wish I liked him better, but yeah, he was kind of rude. Um, uh, going further, Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, it's just Marvel Knights Spider-Man. So this is Marvel Knights. Where they kind of do a little bit darker stories. And so the Black Hat, of course, comes into the uh, darker stories of Spider-Man. Because she's kind of like his dark side kind of heroiness or whatever else. And I think these are actually more modern, so I should have these kind of further off in the stacks. But... And here's her with the Miles Morales Spider-Man. And then this is like the more modern look of the black cat. You know, less boobs, more kind of like linear. Um, Sensational Spider-Man. And oh, yeah, this one's actually, uh, this cover was done by uh, Clayton Crane. He's one of my more favorite artists. He does these just crazy like painting looking things, kind of like Alex Ross. But it's just like kind of a whole different weird take on how they do things. And then here, oh, here's here's one of the comics issues I was talking about where they kind of do a, a retake on the very first appearance of her. So it's just kind of like a kind of a new version of the old cover. So that's pretty cool. And they did that a couple of times, which you'll see again. There's kind of a funny, more like animated looking black cat. 
And then, oh, here's another uh, Clayton Crane. And then for a while, you didn't see the black cat. She like disappeared for like maybe 10 years or something like that. And then when she finally came back, um, they did an amazing Spider-Man series. And it was Return of the Black Cat. And this is just the hardcover edition because apparently this cover here is worth like 100 something bucks. And you know, why would I go spend 100 bucks or some odd when I could spend 15 bucks on this and have the same cover? And then here is like the cover, one of the other covers that you could get. And of course, they're both drawn by J. Scott Campbell, but I'm not going to spend a bunch of money on J. Scott Campbell anymore because, yeah. Um, oh yeah, and while I'm at it, this thing here, this is actually one of the most expensive covers of Spider-Man in modern day that you can get. Um, Amazing Spider-Man presents, no, I forget which exact issue this was. It was just when they were going to redo the Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man. And it was like, this was a variant edition. And I think this cover sells for like, I don't know, three to 400 bucks. Uh, so basically I had a buddy, my buddy Harold, actually, he's a graphic designer. And he was working for this company that does like these art on canvas things. And I was like, hey, um, if you could find this cover, I would really like to have it on like a cool canvas thing. I was thinking maybe smaller. I didn't want to buy the comic book. There's no way I was going to spend three or four, 500 bucks on this comic issue. Um, so yeah, so he made me this. So this is a one of kind. It's the only one in the world like it. Uh, but yeah, at least now I have that cover and I don't have to go spend a ton of money on trying to get it. And then I've got this. Uh, this is actually a hand-drawn cover. It's the only one in the world. Uh, I had a... <laughs> I didn't have any other blank Spider-Man uh, covers. So I took this one to a Comic-Con. Found an amazing artist, this girl. I think, I've, I've, I'm not sure if this is Don McTeague. Uh, I'm gonna have to try to look through the books to see uh, what her name is. But I remember her being Eric Basil Dula's girlfriend at the time. I'm not sure if they were still dating. Maybe it was his wife, I'm not sure. But uh, it was many years ago. Uh, wait, not many years ago, about five years ago. Um, but yeah, that was Eric Basil Dula's girlfriend. I had her draw that for me. And then this comic book is actually worth a bunch of money, and it's even worth more because this one's also signed by Stan Lee, and I put that in my other Stan Lee video, but this is kind of one of the harder variants to find. Fetches anywhere from about 150 to 200 bucks, maybe. Maybe it's only 100 bucks. I mean, I kind of forget. Um, and this might have been a mistake when I got it because I was ordering something else, and they sent me this instead, and I was just like, hey fine for me and then uh then there's another series marvel did uh, marvel divas and black hat was a part of that so it was like firestar and black hat and uh hellcat and i forget what this girl's name is but um yeah they had a side series and i think i missed out on that at the time because i kind of go in and out of comic books so if you don't get stuff current then you have to go back and have to pay a bunch of money for comic books and I try to avoid spending too much there on comic book wise um, but yeah different appearance she made here's another cool what if which was uh, I don't know what the what if on this was maybe it was another what if Peter Hood hooked up with Felicia Hardy instead of Mary Jane again and if going further there we go let's see Spider-Man the Black Hat Strikes uh, I'm not quite sure when this series come out. So generally, I go to comic book stores and I just kind of, if they have them in alphabetical order, I'll just kind of go into the series where they have, you know, B for Black Hat or Spider-Man. You know, so sometimes they'll, all the Black Hat stuff's in the Spider-Man section, and sometimes they have her in her own section. So I just put anything I find that I don't have that I can get for decently cheap, I'll pick it up. And like these ones, uh, Heroes for Hire. This is another thing that Black Hat ended up appearing into with a bunch of other different heroes and I think this is kind of like the along the same lines of the uh, Marvel Divas but these were like you know basically mercenary heroes where they're they're for hire you have them do little odd jobs for you but Black Cat makes some nice cover appearances in those so of course I'm going to get those and moving on let's go House of M Avengers, which is just a random cover appearance from the Black Cat there on the bottom corner. Uh, Deadpool, she actually had a Deadpool appearance. So 
So that was pretty cool. They're riding on the back of the uh, black suit Deadpool. And then Silk came out. This was after the Spider-Verse and all that. And Black Hat just happened to be one of the big bad guys. And I think Silk's Spider-Verse. So each spider uh, character had their own universe that they came from. And so, yeah, a couple of those different universes. The Black Hat's there, and she's causing problems. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Guardians team up. This was just kind of a funny one because um, this is uh, the Black Hat with Star Lord. You can't really see her, but she's kind of wrapping around the back of the Star Lord there. So I kind of noticed that and picked that up. And here we're getting into some of the more like uh, higher end variants that you could get. Here's a J. Scott Campbell, Amazing Spider Man Renew Your Vows, number two. And most of these you have to like order super online because you can't find them. Um, this is a funny variant of one of that uh, other picture that I saw you, where it's like the black suit Spider-Man kissing Mary Jane at their wedding, and their black hat's all upset. Oh, but here's an opposite one where here's the black hat and Mary Jane's the one sitting there all upset. So I thought that was funny to just kind of get these two together, kind of have like opposing factors. <coughs> Later, she's Amazing Spider-Man. She just kind of makes a funny appearance. This is when Spider-Man had that crazy like techno suit where he like glows green. So it's not like the black costume, but still a cool suit because it's just like the black costume except for it's like a different spider and the different eyes, but they kind of like glow. And here's a, this is a really cool variant. This is the Amazing Spider-Man number one modern. And this was the black cat variant. Where, you know, super happy. She's got away with jewels. Now Spider-Man's got a chaser. And oh look, there's Deadpool again. Later one on that. Oh, and here's another one uh, of the variants of these. And it's a J. Scott Campbell cover. It's a Stanley variant edition. I could have got that signed, but I had this one signed instead. But I did get this one signed by J. Scott Campbell right after he was very rude to me. Um, another Amazing Spider-Man number 10. J. Scott Campbell. This is a variant. So I'm not quite sure how much a lot of these things are worth right now because I haven't really been investigating so much, but moving on, more black cat, more black cat. And here's a, you know, there's a couple different versions of these that I've seen, and this was one of them, where the black cat's actually wearing the Venom symbiote. And a couple of them are really awesome, and I want to get it, but I'm just waiting for it to be a little bit cheaper. So like this one, I think it was originally like 10 or 15 bucks, and I was finally able to get it for like six. But the one I really want is like 30 bucks. But I'm waiting to see if I can eventually get that for a lot cheaper than that. Uh, this is a newer issue that I recently picked up about a month ago. Actually, right before the virus kicked in, we went to the comic book store and I got that. I think these are like more for like kids, but I saw yeah, Black Hat on the cover. Let's get it. And then this is actually the modern uh, series, Black Hat series, that's going on right now. And they're all J. Scott Campbell covers, which is a little unfortunate. He does a great job, but it's just as, you know, it's just whenever I think of him, it's just kind of, uh, I'm just like, yeah, J. Scott Campbell, what a dick. But yeah, so there's, uh, I think this might have been the annual number one. Wedding of Spider-Man and the Black Cat. Yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's like Black Cat annual number one or something like that. But she's all wearing white instead of black. It's funny, but this is more of that new series. Here's the new series number one. I think that was the regular cover and number one variant edition which is like a real girl which was kind of silly because I don't know, the mask isn't quite right and I don't even know what that's supposed to be from if anybody knows what this is supposed to be from let me know because I have no idea maybe it's just a cosplayer or maybe there actually was a show or a weird movie or a fan film that had her in there and here's number two there's a bunch of different variants of all of these, but I haven't been able to quite pick up all of them or any of them. I don't know. It's just like I'm not going to spend a bunch of money on it. So if I can find it for cheap, that's what I'll do. And there's the number three variant edition. So fortunately, that's not J. Scott Campbell. Uh, so here's number three with J. Scott Campbell. Number four with J. Scott Campbell. Number five with J. Scott Campbell. Number six, this is a different, this is a variant edition. And this is actually supposed to be Black Cat 2099. So those for, that are familiar with the 2099 series, it's just like it's supposed to take place in 2099. Characters are different and they have different variations of like 
their previous uh, counterparts, I guess you would say. So that was pretty funny. And number six. Number seven. Number eight. And I'm up to number nine. And I'm pretty sure that they're past this by now. But that's cool. So I haven't read these yet, but that kind of goes to show you that, oh, who's in this issue? It's going to be Wolverine. But yeah, I think they're a little bit beyond this right now. So I got to kind of catch up. Because yeah, this was last year that this. No, maybe it's the beginning of this year. But yeah, there's more issues to get. So I got to go back and get those whenever I guess I can get around into a comic store. Maybe they're, yeah, I don't think the comic book store that I could get them at is even open yet because of the COVID. Um, but yeah, so that's the Black Hat issue. And this will, this episode is leading into the Lady Death episode, which is kind of like, um, like the horror version, not horror version, but horror, you know, like Crazy hack hacksaw slash blah 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 version of the black cat, which is the Lady Death. So my next episode is going to be about the Lady Death, or well, at least my next episode as far as comic book stuff goes. Um, other than that, look out for when I do the Death Star video because I'm about to do a video on the Death Star playset or play sets because I have multiple. And yeah, good to see you guys, and hope to see you soon. And check you out later.